Chloe, I've got a hot one for you today. What do you think is spicier, Korean or Chinese cuisine? Oh, Evelyn, stirring the pot right off the bat. Are you seriously asking a Korean French woman to judge that? Well, I am a Chinese woman living in Korea. I think we're in a unique position to explore this. Right, we can definitely provide some interesting comparisons. But listeners, keep in mind neither of us are culinary anthropologists, just lovers of food exploring different flavors from our unique perspectives. Absolutely. And besides, there's no definitive answer, right? It depends on regions, dishes, personal spice tolerances. Though I must add, Sichuan pepper is something special. Exactly. And let's not forget about the fiery Korean dish, bulldak. It translates to fire chicken, need I say more? Haha, <laughs> well, it seems like we are in for a spicy ride today. We delved into the dilemma of spicier cuisine between Korean and Chinese, but let's take a step back. Do you think you could explain to us a bit about the different types of spices or flavors we typically encounter in both cuisines, Chloe? With pleasure, Evelyn. Korean cuisine revolves around the harmonious balance between spicy, sweet, salty, and sour. Gochugaru, or red pepper flakes, and gochujang, a fermented red chili paste, are a staple. There are also spicy, tangy flavors, like in kimchi. And then there's also the insanely hot fire chicken that uses capsaicin extract. Ah, uh, quite the rundown of spice-packed food items there. Now let's talk about China. The spice culture there varies immensely based on geography. If we proceed southwards, Cantonese food is known for its sweetness, whereas as we go to the west, Zechuan cuisine is famous for its mala, a numbing hot flavor, thanks to the combination of Zechuan peppercorns and fiery chilies. Geography truly plays an enormous role in defining the spice culture. It's so fascinating to think that one's location can influence their palate to this extent. Absolutely. And that's not all. Spicy food has also been part of traditional medicine in both cultures. It's believed to help with digestion, improve metabolism, and even combat colds. Spicy food for medicinal purposes? Who would have thought? But Evelyn, you've been chatting about spices so enthusiastically, it's got me wondering, what's your most treasured spicy recipe? Well, my most treasured recipe has to be the spicy hot pot broth with a blend of over 10 different types of dried chilies and spices. It's a labor of love, but worth every drop of sweat. This spicy debate always makes me reminisce about my first interaction with Korean flavors. One word, Evelyn, fire noodle challenge. Oh, the notorious fire noodle challenge. I remember you telling me about it. How did it go? Well, let's just say it was a complete disaster. I was just a newbie to the Korean spice range, and there I was, face to face with a bowl of ferocious red noodles. In the spirit of adventure, I dove right in, only to be overpowered by the fiery spice. I still have the video. It's hilarious. Sounds like you stepped into the lion's den without the shield, didn't you? I, on the other hand, relished in my first taste of spicy delight. It was a bowl of Dan Dan noodles in a tiny joint in Chengdu. The heat and numbing feeling was intense but so satisfying. It was like a flavor explosion. I was hooked instantly. A flavor explosion, but a painful one. After my fire noodle disaster, I took a few steps back, developed a tolerance for spice starting with low heat levels. Now, I can't imagine my meals without a kick of spice. But Evelyn, you mentioned the numbing sensation. It makes me curious. Do you think it's the spices themselves or is it a psychological phenomenon? Ah, that's an excellent question. I've been asked about this a lot. Actually, it's the chemical compounds in the spices. Capsaicin, found in chilies, causes a burning sensation, while the numbing sensation in Zechuan cuisine is caused by a compound called hydroxy-alpha-sanchul found in Zechuan peppercorns. So yes, it's all about science and not just in your head. Speaking of spices, let's take a quick detour to France. Not exactly known to test the spice limits like Korea or China, right, Evelyn? Haha, <laughs> you could say that. I recall how the French tend to handle spice on a rather mild scale. Exactly. You see, French cuisine traditionally leans towards the sophisticated and subtle. It's all about the harmony and balance of flavors. Don't get me wrong, spices are used, but it's not about heat. It's more about adding a gentle touch to whatever is being cooked. Ah, less is more approach then. Exactly. As they say, mieux vaut moins mais mieux, less but better. However, 
French spices include flavors like cinnamon, nutmeg, and various herbs, quite unlike the fiery Sichuan peppercorns or intimidating Korean red chili. So, how did your French friends take to the Korean spice palette then? Well, that's an interesting story. I remember this one time I made some kimchi jjigae, a Korean stew for my friends in Lyon. They were intrigued and excited to try it out. The first spoonful and their faces said it all. The spice hit them hard. Bet they called for water? Oh, you bet they did. But it was also my mini social experiment. You see, according to a study by Scoville Heat Unit, tolerance for spice can be dependent on multiple factors, including genetics and repeated exposure. I guess for my friends, it was their first encounter with the world of Korean spice. All right, Evelyn. We've talked a great deal about fiery food adventures, but let's discuss something that often gets overlooked when talking about spicy food beverage pairings. From my knowledge, certain drinks can either enhance the richness of the spices or help cool down the burning sensation. What's your take? Oh, pairing drinks with your spicy food is essential. It's interesting, though, most people assume that water will just rinse away the torture. A big no no if you ask me. Water tends to spread the capsaicin around your mouth, making the spicy sensation even stronger. Wait, really? So, for our spice loving listeners who might have taken a bite too far, what would be your go to drink to combat the heat? Any dairy based drink, such as milk or lassi, can help tame the spice. The fat content helps to neutralize the heat. For me, I would always prefer a refreshing cocktail to beat the heat. Whipping up something citrusy usually does the trick. How about a spicy margarita? I think the sour and spicy notes play well together. Ooh, I can only imagine how that would be a delightful flavor burst. But not all of our listeners might be on board with alcohol. What do you suggest for them? That's a great point, Chloe. For those who prefer non alcoholic drinks, an ice cold glass of lemonade or lime soda could be as equally refreshing. Or if you love the flavor of spice and just need a little cooling sensation to tame the heat, coconut water is pretty fantastic. Hmm. Coconut water with a spicy Thai red curry does sound like a heavenly combo. All right, folks, the next time the spice gets too overwhelming, remember there are cooler ways to take on the heat. Chloe, do you remember those addictive taeokbokki rice cakes with gochujang sauce we often made? Absolutely. The fiery, sweet, and salty flavors were so intense, I couldn't help but enjoy them, despite the burning sensation. What beverage did you pair it with? I think the last time I went with a creamy banana milk to cool the spice down. I believe the sweetness and creaminess was a good counter to the heat. What about you? Well, I went for a more refined touch. A chilled lychee martini. The sweetness of the lychee and the hit of coolness from the chilled beverage made all the difference. But there's not only one way to go about it. For instance, I've read that in Sichuan, to tame the raging heat of their food, they prefer grain spirits. That sounds interesting. I guess we can all learn from this, right? It's all about finding the right balance and what works for you. Definitely, there's no one size fits all approach to food and drink pairing. So, why don't we conduct a mini taste test with some popular drinks? We can explore how they influence the spicy sensation. I love that idea. But let's make it even more fun. What if we both come up with a unique cold beverage, preferably with ingredients our listeners can get easily, and we'll match it with a spicy dish of our choice? The goal is to create an experience where the spiciness is either reduced or the flavor is even more enhanced. That sounds like a spicy challenge, Chloe. I'm in. Evelyn, do you remember eating spicy food for the first time? Ah, that takes me back. I was quite young, not more than six or seven. My father made this dish, kung pao chicken. The first bite was a shock to my palate. I remember grabbing for the nearest glass of water. But as the years went by, I fell in love with the spicy kick. And eventually, I started experimenting it with my cocktails. That's quite interesting. My story involves a lot of sweat and tears. The first time I tried spicy food was when I moved to Seoul for my K pop auditions. My roommate challenged me to finish a bowl of kimchi jjigae, and I accepted. Ha,、huh, and how did that go? Let's just say I spent that night transitioning between an ice cold glass of Korean barley tea and a gallon of milk. But gradually I got used to the spice levels. Now I can't have my meals without a dash of pepper or gochujang. Sounds like a bumpy journey to the land of spice. Well, for all our listeners who are new to the fiery palate, your first experience might be similar. Don't worry, it's completely normal. Tips to handle it 
1. Don't rush while eating. Let your taste buds adapt to the heat. 2. Keep a bottle of water, milk, or any cold beverage nearby to calm the burning sensation. Oh, and everyone, remember to listen to your body. If you're not used to spicy food, it would be a good idea to try it in minimal amounts at first, and then gradually increase the quantity. Chloe, have you ever heard of beer ladas or micheladas? Doesn't ring a bell, but the name sounds interesting. What is it? Well, beer ladas is a Mexican cocktail made with beer, lime juice, spices, and sometimes tomato juice. Essentially, it's a spicy, savory beer cocktail and is perfect for washing down spicy food. The carbonation and ice help cool your tongue, and the savory components often complement the flavors in spicy dishes. Fascinating. Who would have thought of pairing beer with spicy food? Are there any other unique pairings you have come across? Well, another fascinating combination is spicy food with coffee. The bitterness of the coffee can actually help neutralize the heat from the spice. Never thought of coffee beyond breakfast or dessert. A new door of taste exploration just opened for me. Exactly. Experimenting different combinations of food and beverages is part of the joy of culinary exploration. Speaking of exploration, we received a wild spicy food story from one of our listeners. I'm all ears, Evelyn. We should definitely share it with our listeners. Well, this listener participated in a spicy wing challenge at a local pub. The deal was, finish 15 wings, each one spicier than the last, and you get a free meal. The twist? Dousing the final and the spiciest wing in a homemade Carolina Reaper pepper sauce. Oh, ne peut pas croire cela. That sounds like a worthy contender for the Hot Ones show. How did they manage? Well, our intrepid listener had a strategy. They dunk each wing in a glass of milk before eating. The milk's fat content helps to counteract the capsaicin's heat. However, they ran into a problem with the final wing. The milk split. Oh, creme de la creme. I can just imagine the panic. What happened then? Well, our listener thought quickly. They grabbed a slice of bread smothered with butter and took bites of it between mouthfuls of the fiery wing. Damnably ingenious. Wow, sounds like a nail-biting experience. A great reminder for us all. Be more exploratory with our food and drink pairings. You never know when it might save your taste buds. All right, let's get cooking. We're going to create a spicy Szechuan dish today. I'm sure any heat lovers out there will appreciate this one. If you can't stand the heat, don't worry. Chloe will be there to guide you. Absolutely. I'll be your fire brigade today. Now tell us, Evelyn, what's the dish? It's called Kung Pao Chicken, a classic Szechuan dish. The key ingredient here is Szechuan peppercorn, which offers a unique aroma and flavor. It actually has a numbing effect on the tongue that reduces the overall spiciness while enhancing the other flavors. That's interesting. But what if some of our listeners can't find this peppercorn? A great question, Chloe. If you can't find Szechuan peppercorn, you can use a combination of lemon zest and black pepper as a substitute. But it won't give the same flavor. Whenever possible, try to use the real thing. All right, listeners. No need to panic if it's not available. Evelyn, what's the next step? After you stir-fry the chicken, add the fiery chili sauce made from dried red chilies and garlic. Now you can control the heat here by reducing the number of chilies or using them whole without chopping. For those more daring, go on and chop the chilies up. Talking of daring, remember friends, each chili holds its heat in the seeds and veins. So the more of that you include, the spicier your dish gets. Indeed, Chloe. So now just stir everything well and let the flavors blend. Finally, add peanuts for some crunch and garnish with scallions. There you have it, your Kung Pao chicken. You know what, Evelyn? Let's spice things up. What if we put our taste buds to test and have a little challenge right here on our podcast? I like that, Chloe. A spicy challenge, you mean? Exactly. Let's make it a spicy trivia challenge. We'll ask each other questions about spicy food, and the one who answers incorrectly has to eat something spicy. That's fun. But hang on, what's the penalty if someone doesn't want to handle the spice? Let's see. How about something sweet instead? Munching on some sugar or honey helps with the heat, according to some. So the penalty can be a spoonful of honey or maybe a piece of candy. That makes it interesting. And since you initiated this, why don't you start with the first question? Fair enough. Here it goes, Evelyn. Which chili is ranked as the spiciest on the Scoville heat scale? Well, that's a tough one. But if I remember correctly, it's the Carolina Reaper, am I right? Impressive, Evelyn. You're correct. 
Seems like I'm the one getting the heat here. All right, your turn to ask now. Here comes my question, Chloe. Can you tell which country has the spiciest overall cuisine? Pardon the pun, Evelyn, but now you're playing with fire. It's a controversial topic, but many people would argue that India has the spiciest cuisine because of the heavy use of chili peppers in dishes. You saved yourself, Chloe. India is indeed known for its spicy food. But remember, it's not just about the heat. It's about flavors and balance, too. Okay, Evelyn, let's get into our favorite spicy recipes. I'll go first. There's this Korean dish, dak galbi. It's spicy, but in a sweet and savory way. You need chicken, cabbage, sweet potatoes, rice cakes, and finally the key ingredient, gochujang. You just mix everything together, stir fry it, and voila, you've got a mouth-watering spicy dish. That sounds delicious. It's fascinating how gochujang can add such depth. Speaking of balance, my favorite spicy cocktail does just that. It's a spicy margarita. You take two ounces of tequila, one ounce of fresh lime juice, half an ounce of agave syrup. Then you muddle in a slice of jalapeno for that kick. Shake it with ice, strain into a glass, and garnish with a jalapeno slice. I've tried the margarita, but never the spicy one. It must amplify the flavors in a completely different way, right? Exactly. The jalapeno's heat just brings out the rest of the flavors, complementing the sweet and sour elements in quite a unique way. Evelyn, how did you come up with blending spicy elements into your cocktails? Well, Chloe, it all started with my love for spicy food. I was experimenting with different ingredients in my cocktails, and it just hit me, why not try incorporating the heat into them? And it turned out perfectly. That's wonderful, Evelyn. I guess blending in different experiences and tastes can result in a surprising fusion. You know, Evelyn, my family has a sort of tradition around spicy dishes. Oh? Yeah, we used to gather every Sunday at my grandmother's house, and there was always a fresh pot of mapo tofu on the stove. She's half Korean and half French, just like me. So she added her own twist by including some French ingredients. She called it her fusion mapo tofu. It sort of became our family version. How interesting. What is in the French twist? She would use French butter and cream for a smoother, richer flavor, and she'd add herbe de Provence, adding a layer of aromatic complexity. Mmm, the creamy texture with the spicy kick, delightful. Yeah, it was like the East met the West in perfect harmony. It brought such warmth to our family gatherings. Chloe, do you think adding that buttery element helps to manage the spiciness? Maybe. I'm not sure on a scientific level, but I can tell you this. The buttery creaminess did complement the spicy. It provided a fantastic balance of flavors. I see. I might need to experiment with that in my cocktails. Can you share the recipe with our listeners? Surely. Listeners, we'd also love to hear about your special spicy dishes and the stories behind them. You can share them with us via email or social media. But be warned, we may try to cook them in the next episodes. Chloe, listen to this. Our listeners are on fire today. Some great spicy food and drink pairings coming our way. Let's see. Cindy from Busan says she pairs dubaki with ice-cold macchiali. Ah, uh, an interesting pick. The crisp and slight sweetness of macchiali can effectively cut through the deep heat of dubaki. Cindy, great choice. Next, we have Antonio from Naples, Italy. He loves to pair his Induja pizza with a chilled glass of limoncello. Surprise, surprise! Ah, uh, the fiery heat of Induja meeting the sweet lemony flavors of limoncello. That's a wicked pairing, Antonio. Bravo. We also have a question from Tara in Mumbai. She's asking how to handle the spiciness while cooking. So, Chloe, any suggestions from your end? That's a good question, Tara. I'd suggest to start slow, perhaps only using half the amount of spice called for in the recipe. You can always add more, but you can't take it out once it's in. But remember, the right beverage can really help balance the dish if it turns out to be too spicy. Absolutely. Or try adding a cooling element to your food, like yogurt or cream, just like how my friend here Chloe shared about her fusion mapo tofu earlier. The richness can really help balance out the heat. Chloe, I've been thinking. We've discussed a lot about pairing spicy foods and cocktails, but do we know if other beverage types can still give the same soothing effect? How about we try something other than alcohol? That sounds like a fun experiment, Evelyn. Not everyone enjoys alcohol, so this could broaden our listeners' options. Right you are, Chloe. I'm thinking we go for something more refreshing, say, a tart lemonade or even a classic sweet iced tea. 
Great minds think alike, Evelyn. I was just thinking the same. A chilled lemonade might cut through the heat of spicy food, just as a well-made cocktail would. And the sweetness of iced tea could also provide a good contrast. Let's put this to the test, shall we? In hand, we have our spicy teok baki. I'll try a sip of lemonade alongside a bite. Oh, I'm curious about this, Evelyn. While you're braving that fiery combo, I'll opt for my piece with a gulp of iced tea. That sure packed a punch. But surprisingly, the tartness of lemonade seems to ease the heat considerably. A revelation, this. Wow, that's quite something. My pairing here is also quite soothing. The sweet iced tea seems to have a cooling effect post that took Baki spice. Who would have thought, eh? Well, here we have it. Our mini experiment has proven successful. Beyond cocktails, there definitely are other diverse drink options that can go well with spicy food. Seems like there's always a world of culinary excitement to unfold. Well, here we are, one spicy ride later. Today, we journeyed through spice-laden trails of Korea and China, bridging cups full of eclectic beverages. From our spicy challenge to the recipe swap, we've sure stoked the flames of culinary curiosity, haven't we, Chloe? Oh, we absolutely have, Evelyn. Our exploration of flavor strengthens my belief. Cooking isn't just about following a recipe but understanding the ingredients. It's amazing how shifting the level of a single component, like spice, can vastly alter an entire dish. And balancing that heat with a perfectly paired beverage just channels the culinary experience to another dimension. I couldn't agree more, Chloe. For me, building the right cocktail for a dish is like painting. Every drop of liquor or slice of fruit is a stroke of color that builds up the whole picture. It's where my love for bartending and spicy food really converges. Agreed. These discussions are like culinary fireside chats. The way we combine different flavors, create a harmony between food and beverages. It's a roller coaster full of distinct tastes. I must say I'm feeling a tad braver about spice after this interesting episode. Here's to that courageous spirit, Chloe. To our listeners out there, we hope we've managed to ignite a spark in your world of cooking. Go ahead, experiment in your kitchen, mix it up a bit. Who knows, the next best spicy or cocktail pairing might just be on the tip of your spoon. So true, Evelyn. And as we are rounding off tonight's culinary journey, keep your ears and taste buds tuned in for our next episode. The hint is, will we have our cake and eat it too? Until then, keep your palates intrigued and your spices and dreams high.